Stand by. I'm going to get to the White House right now on the North Lawn and check in with Jackie Heinrich and get reaction from what we're hearing from the Biden team now. And Jackie, good morning and welcome to our program. Hello. Good morning, Bill. We just got a statement from President Biden a few moments ago on Nikki Haley dropping out of the race, and I want to read you part of it. Uh, it says, quote, Donald Trump made it clear he doesn't want Nikki Haley's supporters. I want to be clear there's a place for them in my campaign. I know there's a lot we won't agree on, but on the fundamental issues of preserving American democracy, on standing up for rule of law, on treating each other with decency and dignity and respect, preserving NATO and standing up to America's adversaries, I hope we we can find common ground. Uh, so that is pretty significant to hear President Biden trying to court uh, the moderates and the independents who voted for Haley. Uh, and this is sort of in line with what we expected the Biden campaign take to be. You know, after Super Tuesday, they were paying less attention to results uh, where they showed uh, issues he's facing with uncommitted voters in several states. And they were fixated more on what they see as Trump's inability to expand his base. Uh, so now the Biden team is trying to court those voters. They've been pointing for quite a long time to Nikki Haley's performance in some of these early primary states. Uh, taking 19 percent of the vote in Iowa, 43 percent in New Hampshire, 40 percent in South Carolina, 27 in Michigan, and then her win uh, in Vermont last night. And the Biden team has been relishing in polls that show one in three Republican primary voters believe that a Trump criminal conviction would make him unfit for office. Their takeaway here is they've been excited by how all of this uh, anti-Trump feeling within the Republican Party has hobbled the former president's fundraising, and they point the Biden team to weak Trump staffing in infrastructure in the battleground states that he would need to win. Uh, the team, the Biden team says it comes down to Trump's extreme and unpopular agenda. They consistently point to reproductive rights. Uh, and they issued a statement last night over Super Tuesday uh, calling him a dangerous and unpopular candidate with a significant liability in key voting blocks that would block his path to 270. Uh, so we are awaiting any more reaction, uh, but this was pretty fast to come from the president directly, a statement from the president issued through his campaign. Uh, and one more note, you know, Haley dropping out of the race does take away an obstacle that the Biden team has been facing because for several months, a challenge for them was three quarters of undecided voters did not believe that Trump would be the eventual nominee. So now we can expect the Biden team to ramp up their messaging about what is at stake. Uh, and one more thing I'd like to note, you know, the Biden team strategy has not been courting Republican voters, moderate voters, disaffected Trump voters. They see their path to success through pockets of Democrats who didn't come to the polls in 2020, but were mobilized and activated to vote against the Republican agenda in the midterms and then the state and local elections last year. So this statement uh, does appear to be one of the first efforts to sort of court the center uh, or the center right, rather, uh, because that has not been a constituency that has been a priority for the Biden team in what they see as their path to victory. Bill. Hang with us here. I got a question. Dana's got one as well. Any public events today as he preps for the State of the Union address tomorrow night? And yesterday there was word that the president will travel to Georgia sometime before next Tuesday. President Trump plans to be there as well. What more do we know about that showdown? We have no public events uh, for the president today. There's nothing on his schedule. We do have a briefing, though, with Karine Jean-Pierre, and we can expect there's probably significant work going into the State of the Union. Uh, we don't yet know what the tone is going to be in terms of whether he'll make any personal attacks on Trump, uh, because that has been another piece of the strategy that he's been ratcheting up, uh, painting Trump as a loser, uh, pointing to his efforts to overturn the election and cling to power, uh, Biden always going back back to that talking point that he's the only one who has beat Trump. Uh, so we know he's going to hit that messaging on the campaign trail and likely in Georgia when Trump is also there. Uh, that's part of the Sun Belt path, one of the two paths to victory that their data, the Dem Biden team's data, has mapped out as a, a possible path to victory for them. Uh, don't know if we're going to hear that in the State of the Union, though. We're likely going to hear more of a, an agenda comparison that focuses on what the uh, Republican voters have rejected, according to the Biden team, hearkening back to the midterms, things like uh, restrictive abortion policies and um, 
threats of a nationwide abortion ban, Republican support for IVF, uh, and, and discontent about uh, that ruling that we saw. So waiting on any more detail there. Hopefully we'll get it out of the briefing, Bill. Okay, Jackie, thank you. Uh, you answered Dana's question, by yes. the way. Yes. So. Okay. Fulsome answer. Fulsome answer. Yeah, well done. And so, but I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.